Hi guys, it's me Ray and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really dear friend of mine who I'm going to be interviewing, so make sure you stay tuned. Let's get started. So, um, please introduce yourself and let us know where you're from. All right. My name is Koladi Ayokunle Ajila. I am from Ekiti, but I live in Ibado. I, really? yes, I work in a private university, the Dominican University in Ibado. I also, um, I write, I edit, I am into um, related things like that. Excellent. So for those who might not know, where is Ibadan? Like, what is Ibadan? Where is Ibadan? Like, what country is Ibadan? Ibadan is in Oyo State in southwestern Nigeria. Brilliant. And for those who, yeah, don't know, Ibadan has a lot of history. Um, I think the first, one of the first universities was there. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yes, the yeah, university yeah. in Nigeria was started in Ibadan in 1948. Yeah. Um, it started as a campus of the University of London. Yeah. So it was called University College Ibadan, 1948. So yeah. It became a full fledged university in the 50s. Brilliant. So, what is your day to day like as a teacher, especially as, sorry, as a lecturer in a place like Nigeria? So, we often hear a lot of, you know, really bad things about, <laughs> you know, lecturing in a place like Nigeria. Is it that bad? What is it like, you know, with your students? Are your students from mixed backgrounds in terms of different economical backgrounds? Or is it, as you said, it's a private university, so does, that, does that mean it only attracts those who are from the elite um, parts of society? So what is it like being a, a lecturer in Nigeria? Yes, um, I'd say majority of my students are from uh, above average homes in terms of um, the economic wherewithal of their homes because it's a private university and private universities are by definition more expensive than, than the public universities. So a parent or a set of parents will have much more than the average Nigerian in order to be able to enroll a child in a private university. However, by the standards of private universities, Dominican University Ibadan is not expensive. It's probably one of the cheapest. Of course, it's a mission university, and therefore, I assume there is some um, subsidy here and there. But yes, for the students, you could see that, well, whether we like it or not, there is some privilege. There's a privilege right. of learning in a private university. There's also a privilege of knowing that you come from a background where things are not as desperate yeah. as they could be, uh, in, you know, among average Nigerians. Thank you. So when you say, um, you said it a few times, when you say average Nigerian, so what is an average Nigerian? So if you can give us an idea, especially those who are watching who may want to know more about Nigeria or even, you know, move or just want to essentially know more about Nigeria. What does an average Nigeria um, make, make, an average Nigerian make? Because it can be quite relative. So for example, where, oh, for, for those who don't know, we're actually related, it's weird. Well, one day I'll share the story how we're related, but yeah. Um, so in a place like Ikiti, Ikiti, like 50K, 50,000 Naira, I'll put the um, equivalent of it on the screen, is, a lot of money in comparison to a place like Lagos. So what is an average salary for a Nigerian? And what does an average Nigerian household look like when you say this? I can't claim to have the stats. Right. However, um, to earn as much as 200,000 Naira in a month, is um, puts you, as it were, in the class of the elites in Nigeria. Because when you consider that a sizable fraction of, an uncomfortable fraction of the Nigerian adult population is unemployed, and hmm. many are, are underemployed among those who are employed, you know, yeah. people make 
as low as 30,000 Naira in a month. Wow. So how fast you depend on them. You know, people sometimes make less than that as a matter of fact. Yeah. So for those who make, say, 100,000, as low as 100,000 might seem, it looks like something between average and above average in Nigeria. If I don't, if somebody makes a hundred thousand naira in a month and has no dependents, which means right. he or she right. gets to spend the entire money, unless you are expensive, you are likely to <laughs> live a bit comfortably in Nigeria. Wow, brilliant! Thanks for sharing. So, when you said you made reference to a, a large majority of Nigerians being underemployed or unemployed and i'm so happy you mentioned the, pl the point of underemployment because it's something i touch on myself when i have conversations with people because one could be employed and yes you, you you're grateful for employment but it's not necessarily like maybe what you went to school for or you're not challenging yourself you're just taking work so you know why is there such high levels of unemployment especially underemployment in a place like Nigeria. And before I have you answer that question, so here in the UK, I'm not saying this because I have Nigerian heritage, but some of the students that do exceptionally well are West African, and if I'm gonna be very specific, Nigerian. I remember when I went to university, um, I think this is what, I found some stats and it was documenting the amount of students that come from Africa to the UK to study and it was literally majority were Nigerian because it's an as a, as a nation they really value education and the importance of it and you constantly see Nigerians thriving especially outside of Nigeria so to go back to the question why is a place that has a number of very educated educated people why is there a lot of unemployment and underemployment uh, I think it's a complex mix of um, different factors, government related and um, unrelated to government too. Uh, to start yeah. with, we live in a country where certain basic things that people take for granted in other climates are not in place. I mean, right. you do not take it for granted that there is uh, effective and cost effective um, transportation system, the roads, mm. and everything. You also don't take it for granted that there's going to be a constant and affordable supply of power, of yeah. water. Or, so, so much money goes into those things. Same for security. And by the time you look at all those things, you realize that sometimes before you attend to all those things, um, your 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 revenue your earning shrinks considerably because you have right. to think about the whole lot of those things but as for employment one must admit that while the government has failed in several ways it also it hardly happens anywhere that majority of the employment in any country is handled by government and right. that brings us to private initiatives um, I must say that a lot of Nigerians, uh, we have also got into that mentality that, well, when you go to school and you finish, you just want to be employed in an office to do something. Yeah. So much private initiative could make a difference when you look at those things. That's not right. to say people are not making efforts. A lot right. of people are making efforts at the private level. But again, yeah. when you consider those things we had mentioned, Sean, security, um, power supply, yeah. and all those things, Transport, yeah. they do a lot to undermine the efforts that people make in order to you know, set themselves up and all of that. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So what are some challenges as, that you find as an academic in a place like Nigeria? So what are some of the challenges and what are some of the positives? Let's, you know, hone in on some of the positives of being an academic in one of the most <laughs> vibrant places, in my opinion, in the world. You know, this is not just like across Nigeria. I have my biases, but what are the challenges and what are some of the positives of being an academic? Right. Um, 
let's look at some of the challenges we have mentioned you know security uh, well this is not very common on um, private university campuses but in nigeria generally there are problems such as cultism or right. at the workplace and um, lack or inadequacy of teaching aid materials you know univers um, uh, university libraries are under equipped there's no light sometimes the um, lecture theaters are so overpopulated that you know they seem to be busting at the seams yeah. and all of that there are those there are those problems that are also they well uh artificial problems so to speak of people who think that going to school and acquiring a certificate is an end in itself hmm. because when that happens people lose out on the critical skills they should acquire in the process of learning wow. they just focus on passing and you know um, acquiring certificates which are oftentimes useless because the real who wants skills that count not just that you have a certificate wow now, yeah on the positive side in nigeria an academic as um on flamboyant as he may seem can get by better than uh, a lot of other nigerians right for example academics are one of the few classes of people in nigeria who don't seem particularly desperate to run out of Nigeria because they know they can go and come anytime. And well, the gate seems to be um, uh, indefinitely left open to them, especially if you are good enough and you have something to offer to yeah. the outside world and all of that. There is that. And there is a fact that, like, say, a banker, an academic doesn't have to invest so much into his wardrobe. Therefore, he could spend his money. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> oh, so, damn. Yeah, Not that as a banker, yeah. but I, we'll, we'll touch on that in a bit. Go on. <laughs> and of okay. course, because you are an academic, you could also, yeah. your time is, the, your, your time structure for the work you do is more convenient than you know, those who do office work and you have to resume at this time and um, leave at this other time. Um, if you are a, an academic in Nigeria, I mean, you, you, are, you are a bit more relaxed in doing yeah. your work, knowing that, I mean, there is a lot you can do without being fed into a particular, um, you know, uh, straight jacket and all of and that. All of that. Yeah, yeah, and please do let us know what, what subject, subject you teach, teach or subjects, subjects do you teach? I teach philosophy. Brilliant. And you're religious as well. Because I remember I was like, wow, that's a strange combo. Because normally when someone says they do philosophy, they're like, they don't have a belief system. But you're, that's not the case for you. So that was quite interesting. So, um, I am, go on. I'm a Christian. Yeah. And I am a Catholic. And um, I really don't see any conflict between my faith and my work. Right. Of course, on the one hand, one could just say, well, this is a job and this is a faith. But um, what I practice as a philosopher does not contradict what I practice as um, a Christian because um, philosophy is not about denying or contesting the existence of God. Philosophy right. is primarily about giving good reasons for whatever position you take. Right. And, you know, uh, so when you look at it that way, if someone says there is God, he needs to give good reason why he believes that there is God. But wow. on the flip side, if someone says there is no God, he also has to give as much reason for believing <clears throat> that there is no God. So that's really not a problem when you look at the Bible. Um, First Peter chapter three verse fifteen says, "You must have good reason for anyone who asks you for the hope." Yeah. You put. And yeah. Um, I remember a philosopher who is also a Christian, Martin Heidegger. He says, "A faith that cannot give a good example, uh, uh, give a good account of itself, is no faith but mere convenience." So, right. Yeah, yeah. 
That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So you also mentioned that you're a writer. So what do you write? You know, what type of writing? Is it non-fictional? Um, is it fiction? This is for the benefit of our reader, uh, viewers. And what also yes, inspires, I... what inspires your writing as well? Right. I, I write mainly fiction. I've done some non-fiction, but largely I write fiction. My fiction works uh, what I would describe as um, what if kind of stories. So yeah. like my latest work titled House Girl is yeah. on Medium. And yeah. um, essentially it says, yes, thank you very much. And essentially the story is about how housemates are treated in Nigeria. Yeah. Very often we hear the voices of their employers or their masters and mistresses. Yeah. We hear the voices of those people and they speak about how house girls are these and how house girls are that. Right. In this particular story, I am like, what if we hear the other side? What if we hear what the house girls have to say? So hmm. I put it in the form of a fiction. And uh, yeah, because I always believe that um, as they say in Yoruba, anyone who hears one side of a story and judges with that is a wicked person. Mm. So I believe that uh, they are silent, but they are a critical part of the narrative and we cannot make any conclusions about how they are treated or what kinds right. of behaviors they have unless we hear from their own side. Right, right. Brilliant. Um, you also teach Yoruba as well. So does anyone who wants to learn Yoruba, please do. I'll leave um, Ayokunle's information in the description bar below.